Can you anyone describe what would happen next? The VR minus would attack the cargo cation yeah. and now, attach itself. Yeah, why is that reasonable? Why is it reasonable for the bromine to be at the tail? Because it's a nucleophile. And how do we know? Because it has a negative charge. People with negative charges tend to be nucleophilic. And why is it reasonable for the number two to be at the head? Because it has that positive charge. You always want to make sure that your arrows are reasonable. All right, well, let's draw our final product then. Can we have several final products? Because they can be attached from the same side. And That's a good question. So we should, we'll have to decide whether we'll get one product or two. That's one of the issues that we'll have to face. Two. Let's think that through. Uh, so go ahead and draw what we're going to get then. They're both. Right. Really? Yeah. But isn't it? So it doesn't matter. There's no like wedge or dash. Oh. It's not a so that's only if it's a stereocenter? Yeah. That you can get two products. Right. Okay. Why is this different from what we learned on the last midterm? On the last midterm? Well, on the last okay. midterm, you guys were covering okay. substitution okay. reactions. Okay. And you were covering, um, and this is clearly not a substitution. Um, okay. And. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a substitution? No, I mean, no, it's okay. Yeah, and the other type of reaction you saw was elimination. Well, what happens in an elimination reaction? Well, an elimination, re elimination reaction is where you form a double bond. I'm sorry, you form a pi bond. Elimination is where you form a pi bond. But this is the opposite of elimination because we are removing a pi bond. So how does this relate to what you saw for the last midterm? Well, in the last midterm, you saw how to form pi bonds, and here we're seeing how to remove pi bonds or attack them. So this is what we would call an addition reaction. Um, one reason this might remind you of last, uh, before the midterm though, is that this is like an SN1 or an E1 in that we have a carbocation intermediate. And that actually helped us to predict the reactivity because we know that more stabilized carbocation intermediates are happier. So it's not an SN1 or an E1, but it actually looks at this point like the second half of an SN1 reaction. So yeah, actually, from this point on, this is like the second half of an SN1. That's right. From this point on, this is exactly like the second half of an SN1. Uh, that's actually a, a good analogy to point out. All right, so let's make sure we've drawn uh, the right uh, products here. So that would give us so that would give us this. Now we're attacking something trigonal planar, and we've learned in the past that when you attack something trigonal planar, that gives you a maximum of two stereoisomeric products. Um, however, you're only going to get those two products if you're forming a stereocenter. Uh, and in this case, is this a stereocenter? No, we're not forming a stereocenter. So it would be a mistake to try to draw two different products here. Uh, and we don't need to bother using wedges and dashes since there's only the one stereoisomer in this case. We should have thought about that same issue on the number four. Is the number four becoming a stereocenter? No. No. And so therefore, for the same reason, we didn't bother drawing wedges and dashes here, and we only got one product on that side as well. So the key question to always ask yourself is, am I forming a stereocenter? That's when you can have possibly two products and when you have to use the wedges and the dashes. If you're not forming a stereocenter, then the geometry isn't very interesting and we don't usually use wedges and dashes. All right, so that would give us uh, here our final product. All right, and it looked like uh, we were all a little bit rusty on this. This is a really crucial reaction, so we'll want to make sure we've got this down uh, and then go on to some other reactions. Um, let's see, would we call this uh, Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Markovnikov, Markovnikov, is when the electronegative atom ends up on the more substituted carbon. Markovnikov is when the electronegative atom ends up on the more substituted carbon. Well, here the bromine, the electronegative, ended up on the number two, not the number four, the more substituted carbon. However, we will soon see other reactions that are anti-Markovnikov, so we can't just memorize Markovnikov. We have to know why this was Markovnikov, so we can see why other ones won't be in a second. It's all explained by the mechanism. If you think through the mechanism, you see where things are going to end up. Uh, what type of reaction is this? Substitution, elimination, or addition? Addition. Addition. Uh, we could also call it, what type of addition? Electrophilic addition. Why is it electrophilic? Because who was the first thing to attack the double bond? An electrophile. <clears throat> so it's electrophilic addition. What type of electrophilic addition is it? Well, we called it hydrohalogenation. We would call this hydrohalogenation. Why is hydrohalogenation a good name for this reaction? Because it has hydrogen and it has a halogen. 
Yeah, first the hydrogen attack and then the halogen. Okay. Uh, in fact, let's uh, take a look at our handout here. Like to go with like what's the addition type, the steps, how and why, an example, and if it's a stereo center, if it's a stereo Because like there's several like different types of addition. So like then and, like some are like more common costs or like less substitutes and other than that. So like here we can have it too. I'll do it and then Okay, so let's also take a look at the handout on uh, addition on alkenes, the alkenes handout, page one of the alkenes handout. If you all have that with you. Mm Page one is electrophilic additions initiated by protonation. On this page, we're looking at the electrophilic additions that were initiated by protonation. Is that what happened here? Yes. The first thing that happened is that the double bond protonated. Okay, and uh, we just went over the mechanism for that. The most important thing here is the regiochemistry. The important thing is that the uh, halogen attaches to the more substituted carbon. Why? Because the hydrogen attaches first, and then the halogen attaches to the carbocation, which we want to be more substituted. Stereochemistry is not as important here, but um, especially if you're not forming a stereocenter, that won't uh, matter here. But if you were forming a stereocenter, that would give you uh, two products at that point. Okay, so that is our hydrohalogenation. That's just one of the many types of reactions that we really have to have mastered at our fingertips. Again, this is like, say, how the bishop moves in chess or something. Mm -hmm. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. All right. And to remind you guys again, I think some of you were thinking at first that we were going to form a cyclic onium intermediate. Well, we'll see that soon enough, but that was not the type of reaction we were looking at there. 